Hey guys, welcome back to Foxy Book Reviews. Now, I know I said that the book that I would be looking at after I did The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle was going to be The Scorpio Races, but we're not doing that one today. <laughs> the reason being that it's not hitting me the way that I want it to at the moment, so we're going to put it off to the side. Um, life is very stressful, as I'm sure it is for everybody, for me right now. In retrospect, starting a book review thing uh, right before the holidays <laughs> was not the best idea, um, but it is what it is. Um, so I was recently reading through something that was not my book collection, and I, um, I splurged, and I went and I bought myself uh, two books, even though I told myself I would not buy myself <laughs> any more books until I got through what I had. However, I think I can make an exception. Um, it's two poetry books, so we're going to be looking at Richard Sykin, um, Crush, and War of the Foxes. Hold those up, so. Crush and War of the Foxes by Richard Sykin. Um, I had heard his name, I had read, like, pieces here and there, you know, Tumblr likes to snapshot sections of poetry, um, or Instagram, uh, so I was looking through and I saw some pieces of his work, and I had never really been truly motivated to buy his things, uh, even if I liked them, mostly because I didn't know who he was, um, and they were already right there, so I didn't need to buy his stuff. Um, terrible, <laughs> terrible practice. Go out and buy books, please. Buy books. Support the arts. Uh, but I was reading this one thing and it had excerpts of uh, his poetry, his poem um, called um, Litany in which certain things are crossed out. And I don't know if I was just in a weird state of mind or if I was um, just feeling particularly inspired that day, but it just, it struck me. Uh, so I was like, you know what, um, I'll splurge, I'll buy myself his books. Those are, as far as I'm aware, only his, his only two books, um, Crush and War of the Foxes. Uh, War of the Foxes came out in 2015, so... I don't know if he's published anything since then, but he does currently also, uh, he is the founder of, um, I think it said founder. Do, 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 do. Nope, not in this one. Is it in this one? Um, he's a co-founder and editor of the literary magazine Spork, so I'm assuming that he's still writing, but probably also, uh, working on that. There's a word that I wanted to use coordinating no I don't know it'll come back to me in the middle of the video and I'll be like that was the word um but because uh as far as I know these are his only two books um and because as far as poetry grows you know they're not that big um crush is longer crush is 60 62 pages and war of the foxes is about 50 yeah, about 47 total. Um, so, you know, that's pretty short. Uh, I could do an extensive review on each one individually, but I figured may as well just put them together. Um, a first reading for Crush took me about two hours. Uh, I was distracted because I was sitting on the beach because it is January, but it is 85 degrees outside because sunny California. So. That was fun, <laughs> um, and I was kind of distracted by the goings-ons around me, so probably not as long of a read for that. War of the Foxes is a bit longer in terms of poetic length and heaviness um, than Crush is, so it takes a little bit more to digest, but overall, you know, four hours tops, and that's if you read them all in one sitting. I have a bad habit. If I put a book down, I won't come back to it, so I had to... Um, sit down and read the whole thing and being outside, you know, I was away from video games and my cats and other distractions aside from the goings on around me, so I was able to get it done. Um, so we're going to kind of talk about them, not necessarily in comparison, um, they are, I don't ever want to compare people's 
own books like I would never say oh this author wrote this but then they wrote this and it was different um, even if it has been if there was a significant change or if there was a significant change that was understandable like they went through something that changed it or for instance if they're a poet and they wrote a novel maybe I'll compare those um, so I'm not I don't really want to focus on differences um, I liked both of them I do prefer crush crush in general was more my speed more my style um, but all in all he's an excellent poet and um, I think his he's worth reading regardless uh, yeah so we'll get into it so like I said I'm not gonna try to compare them but I am gonna sort of start by looking at them differently and then talk about them together so we are gonna start with crush just because I do like it better <laughs> um, crush is uh, if you see any Richard Sykin like clips or like snapshots of his work it's usually from crush um, that I've noticed all of his sort of most quotable pieces come from this one uh, which I like and crush was the uh, Yale series of younger poets contest winner and that was back in oh I should have prepared ahead of time shouldn't I but it's more fun when it's unscripted um, and that was back in 20, 2005, I almost said 25, that's not correct. So that was back in 2005 and then War of the Foxes came out in 2015, so maybe he just does 10 years apart, who knows. Um, <laughs> in that case, we're not going to get another book from him until 2025. And if it's any subject matter is anything to go by, he'll have a lot of things to be writing poems about. We'll get to that. Anyway, so Crush, um, the foreword by Luis Gluck, maybe? <laughs> um, actually kind of explains a lot of it, um, but I'll just read the portion that's included on the the blurb in the back, um, just because it is like a fairly long forward for uh, a poetry book in my personal experience. I did work with the poetry press for uh, two years, and we only... how many did we do? One, two, three, one, four... I was around for about four of the books. Um, we did three one year, one another year. Uh, and so I did see some of like the forewords that were done. And poetry books are tended to be in like a smaller thing. Like I have Evelyn right here. So like that was an awkward angle to hold my hands. But like they're just kind of smaller sized um, in terms of book size. But also smaller obviously in terms of length. So it was kind of interesting that uh, this was a fairly long forward. Um, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, it was about six, seven pages long. Um, in a book like this length, that's a lot of pages. Uh, when most of them are two, three pages long, from what I've noticed. I, I'm sure if you're more, if it's like an anthology, if it's a collection, if it's a journal, they'll have longer forwards or something, but this was his first book and it had like a six or seven page uh, <laughs> forward so that's impressive um, but I'll just read the part that's on the back uh, so it says as the distinguished poet and competition judge Luis Gluck writes in the forward if panic is his ground note Sykin's obsessive focus is a tyrant the body his title crush suggests as much in the dictionary among the words many meanings to press between opposing bodies so as to break or injure to oppress to break pound or grind or as a noun extreme pressure out of this cauldron of destruction its informal meaning infatuation the sweet fixation of girl and boy or in psychin boy on boy the risk of obsessive material is that it may get boring repetitive predictable shrill I, sorry, I hovered over the word repetitive because it that didn't look like a word to me. <laughs> um, and the triumph of Crush is that it rides and blazes while at the same time holding the reader utterly. Sustaining interest seems far too mild a term for this effect. What holds a sheer art despite the apparent boredom. Now something about the foreword in this that did get me that's not included in the back uh, is the ending bit of it. So... I'm not gonna, uh, well, I guess I'll read the whole thing. So it says, where does it start? By Higginson's report, Emily Dickinson famously remarked, if I had read a book and it makes my whole body feel so cold no fire can warm me, I know that it is poetry. 
If I feel physically as if the top of my head were taken off, I know that it is poetry. There are the only ways, these are the only ways I know it. Is there any other way? She should, in that remark, have shamed forever the facile, the decorative, the easily consoling, the tame. She names, after all, responses that suggest violent transformation, the overturning of complacency by peril. In practice, this has meant that poets quote Dickinson and proceed to write poems from which will and caution and hunger to accommodate present taste have drained all authenticity and unnerving originality. Richard Sykin, with the best poets of his impressive generation, has chosen to take Dickinson at her word. I had her reaction. Now, I don't know who Louise Gluck is. I kind of want to go and read some of her now, because if that's the way that she writes frequently, I have hair in my mouth, then that's impressive. I don't know, <laughs> it says something when the foreword to a poetry book gives you chills from like the last line and you haven't even started reading the poetry yet um <laughs> that's just impressive but so in general the idea of crush is that it's it kind of it's one one long sort of history of this relationship with the relationship that like the the main character um has with sort of sexuality that not just meaning um, what his own sexuality is, but also that there's a lot of scenes of sex, um, there's, but not, not like graphic, but a lot of like pining, longing, sort of love that's not working, communication that's not working, all hinged on connection, all hinged on that like attraction or the longing that we want and we crave but that we can't find or that we feel we can't find or sometimes that we feel we don't deserve um and it does read sort of like an overarching story it does start at one point and get to another um it does all the poems are different are named they are all uh they take place in three segments um just named one two and three with several poems in each little segment but they all follow the same sort of character. Um, he's never really named, <laughs> um, but uh, he does have a partner that is named often um, Henry. Um, there are instances of other nameless individuals. Not that the names are important, but they're all, what I'm getting at is all of the poems have this connection. They all despite them being different and incredibly interesting in each own regard um he does in this in crush have a sort of typical way of writing a typical way of presenting his poetry um it's usually sort of in these fragmented sort of paragraphs uh, or like long blocks with different lining um that's typically how it goes occasionally he'll have like longer pieces like this where it's just like a sort of one thing um and then he'll have a few times where he'll have like a list like this where it's like a prosy poems prosy poetry um but it does follow this sort of like as it says this sort of panic um but not a panic that's panicking it's like a panic that you feel deep-seated within you that you can't quite get away from that it's always there you know like an anxiety that just hides inside of your body and stays there um and it just follows you and it controls you it when you think it's gone it's there and it's waiting to pull you back um just things like that it's just that sort of like you read it and you go yeah i feel kind of uncomfortable but it's not happening to me um so yeah it's it's his poetry, just this in particular, the Crush, just follows this sort of story about like love and loss and wishing for things and feeling bad about things that are happening, but also not feeling bad about things that are happening. Uh, just sort of like it being the way it is and hoping you could change it, but not being able to or not wanting to because if you change it, then it's gone and you kind of want the chaos because the chaos is something. Um, and it's really, I don't know, it's really interesting. Uh, one of the uh, pieces that I'd actually seen snapshotted and floating around Tumblr was this section. Um, imagine this, 
You're pulling the car over. Somebody's waiting. You're going to die in your best friend's arms. And you play along because it's funny, because it's written down. You've memorized it. It's all you know. I say the phrases that keep it all going, and everybody plays along. Imagine, someone's pulling a gun, and you're jumping into the middle of it. You didn't think you'd feel this way. There's a gun in your hand. It feels hot. It feels oily. Which, on its own, is amazing. <laughs> but then, like, the next few poems talk about having this bullet inside of him. Um, and it's not literally a bullet, but it feels like a bullet. And just this, like, tragedy of jumping in front of something, of taking a hit for something, of feeling like you needed to, but then once you have it, you don't want it, but you're also holding on to that tragedy as hard as you can because it's yours. Um, and if you get rid of it, then like you have nothing, you're empty, but it's also sort of a tragedy in relation to another person and wanting to keep that tragedy because if you keep that tragedy, that person stays because they're part of it. But if you let them forgive you or if you let them, if you forgive them, um, or if you let them move on, then you're losing them and the tragedy. So it's very interesting. Um, he often, what I've noticed is, uh, he never seems to quite choose exactly who's talking and what point of view it is. Um, and that's sort of going back to the characters is that even in War of the Foxes, he does this. There is a you, but there's also an I. Sometimes there's a we. Um, in War of the Foxes a lot, what he does is he will tell the story from like an overview, uh, tell the poem from an overview. And yet, in his one of his last poems in uh, Crush, it's about, um, it's called You Are Jeff. And it's just following this list of like instances where there's two people or three people or four people and they're all named Jeff, but they're all the main character, the main voice. And that's sort of the thing is like, sure, he has Henry in the poem, but the you in his poem might not be Henry. Sometimes he's talking to other people. Sometimes he's talking to himself, but answering in the same poem. And it's never quite clear in most of the poetry which it is and it's sort of open to interpretation and you go back and you read it and then a couple poems later you're just like whoa <laughs> whoa that makes sense you go back to the poem that you weren't sure and you go now I get it now I know what she's talking about which she's talking to and it's it's just amazing it's I just love it a lot because a lot of the way he writes is just so it's this interesting mix of like abstract really large concepts like panic like obsession like fear um thoughts of suicide like existence you know things like that the universe um these stories that question who we are and what we're doing and how and why um but then he'll have something put into it and this happens in more of the foxes a lot which i'll sort of bring in now, um, he'll be talking about something so, so abstract, so over the top that like, but in a way that feels like it's not abstract, in a way that feels like you're drawn into it, but then he'll throw in things like, uh, I am not the moon, I am your own big stupid head just trying to talk to you. And if, by piecing in all of these little like, really human ways of speaking, really human conversational type wording, it just sort of it hits you. It's like, yeah, I've been awake at two in the morning staring at the ceilings with these grand thoughts and then rolled over and had a text message from earlier in the day that was like a cat picture or was someone saying what they ate for dinner. You know, it's like these big grand things are grounded in the human part of us in the humanity um, we're making them seem bigger because we're comparing them or rather uh, Sykin's comparing them and just juxtapositioning them besides such minuscule things like War of the Foxes he has a poem that's literally about that starts with like a fox trying to 
hunt down rabbits. But then he gradually gets bigger and bigger into these grander ideas of like the fox hunting the rabbit and then a sailor with his dead brother and then someone is a spy and then it all comes back and it's so interesting the way he can expand an idea and that's even said in the back of actually that's even said in the blurb on the back of war of the foxes it says in this restless swerving book simple questions such as why paint a bird are immediately complicated by concerns of morality human capacity and the ways we look to art for meaning and purpose while participating in its and our own invention um so it's just interesting the way that he does that and he does that in both uh the big abstract followed by the humanistic aspects but it's definitely more in war of the foxes now i didn't quite like war of the foxes as much i still liked it i think he's amazing but the reason i didn't quite enjoy war of the foxes was because i didn't feel like it was a sort of cohesive story um that's not to say poetry needs to be cohesive or that it needs to follow a story from beginning to end in a poetry book but after having read crush where things do sort of have a all the poems are their own separate entities but they're all connected and something that's mentioned in one poem comes back up in full force in another poem um and it all centers on what i feel is more of a concrete feeling of something like a more concrete plot um for all intents and purposes uh regarding poetry crush i just feel there was more of a thread that guided each poem in its place they were sort of all put together on a necklace that you could wear um, whereas War of the Foxes is more of a a collection of thoughts that have similar themes but are not necessarily telling a story they're more just like if he was sitting one day and having a bad day and he wrote this list of abstract ideas down uh, and then moved on to the next one a different day that's sort of what War of the Foxes feels like to me and also in War of the Foxes, he does the long sort of poems more. Uh, I don't think he really ever does any of his ones that are in Crush, which are the sort of uh, awkwardly, not awkwardly, but like, I'm sure it has meaning to him, <laughs> the way that they're spaced out. Um, that's not to say they need to have meaning or that you need to understand it. Sometimes it just looks cool. Um, some, But I say as the MFA student, Look, write your poetry how you want to write it. People understand it, they understand it. If they don't, who gives a shit? Uh, <laughs> um, but he doesn't do that in War of the Foxes, have the, uh, the random spacing. I think awkward is just my go-to word. He does do the lists, um, and he does have some interesting things where at one point he, when I get to it, he has, this, it's called Three Proofs, and they're, poems are not they're poems about uh artists um and sort of like just little chunks so it was hard for me to get into this one as much because of the fact that it wasn't this story it didn't feel as personal i guess that's what it is it didn't feel as personal to me as crush did crush felt like it was like bearing his soul it was true events i don't know if they are I could look it up, but I haven't. Um, I, it was like, it felt like a true story. It felt like I was watching this conflicted drama romance on TV or on, a, on the big screen and just watching him as he had these horrible things happen, as he dealt with all of this depression and anxiety and partners that were nice and partners that won't and the majority of them weren't and dealing with like holding the burdens of other people while still also holding your own and i didn't get that feeling of war in the foxes or war of the foxes not war in the foxes um they do connect there are re repetitive themes and that's a thing that he does a lot is um for instance uh in the poem actually titled war of the foxes he starts with a story that i mentioned about the fox with the wolves and then he goes into uh let me tell you a story about war and then let me tell you a story about war and he repeats that and it turns in turns into let me tell you a story about love um and it just talks about 
it, so it has that rep repetition and it talks about similar themes with differing ways, differing stories, different sort of metaphors and similes. Uh, in War of the Foxes, it's also a lot more bodily. Um, not that Crush wasn't. Crush is very much bodily, but War of the Foxes, it's like, um, I cut off my hand and I threw it into the sky and it became a bird. Later, I cut off my head and put it on the ground or put it back on with glue. Um, things are a lot more vivid and sort of concretely described in War of the Foxes, while still maintaining that sort of grandeur, that sort of elusive what's what of the universe. Um, Crush felt more of a narrower focus, but with these more abstract ideas, these more sort of delicately played wording of descriptions than War of the Foxes did. Um, and I did like both. <laughs> I liked both immensely, but there's just something about the the wording of Crush that just hits you closer because it feels like it could be a situation that you're part of. Um, like this one instance, or I, I will not be able to, what's this one called? Actually, funny. This is called Litany in which certain things are crossed out, which is the whole reason that I picked up these books. Um, but it says, I can already tell you think I'm the dragon. That would be so like me, but I'm not. I'm not the dragon. I'm not the princess either. Who am I? I'm just a writer. I write things down. I walk through your dreams and invent the future. Sure, I sink the boat of love, but that comes later. And yes, I swallow glass, but that comes later. And the part where I push you flush against the wall and every part of your body rubs against the bricks, shut up. I'm getting to it. For a while, I thought I was the dragon. I guess I can tell you that now. And for a while, I thought I was the princess. Cotton candy pink, sitting there in my room in the tower of the castle, young and beautiful and in love and waiting for you with confidence. But the princess looks into her mirror and sees only the princess, while I'm out here slogging through the mud, breathing fire, and getting stabbed to death. Okay, so I'm the dragon. Big deal. <laughs> like, that just feels... In a way, it feels like I'm being spoken to directly. It feels like that's something that's being talked about to me. Uh, but that's something that I would say, you know? Like, okay, I'm the dragon. Whatever. But then you have something in... War of the Foxes, a poem called Ghosts, Zero, Suitcase, and the Moon, which says, Contrast and likeness, the difference between one bird and many, the similarity of one bird, one worm, one stone, from finger counting to sticks to symbols to abstractions, magnitudes no longer represented by pebbles, numbers larger than ten or no longer human. They fly from the hand into the imaginary sky we call hypothesis. That just feels heavier to me, and it feels like you have to sit on that a lot longer than you would need to sit on the words that he uses in Crush. Um, I keep knocking my desk and shaking the camera. <laughs> I'm doing this in one take, so, you know, I'm tired, my bangs are annoying me, this is going really long, but I really like these poems! And I had more stuff to say. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm not gonna go on forever. You can't really talk about poetry in a way people can understand unless they have the poetry in front of them, unless they can read it, unless they understand it, unless they want to understand it. And the thing with poetry is, the way that I'm interpreting it may not necessarily be the intention, but it, it may not also be the way that you would interpret it. Um, so, uh, I got both of them for about oh, 35 bucks, new, paperback, um, and so... All in all, that's not entirely expensive. I would highly recommend you go do it. You can get it cheaper if you get it in an ebook or a nook book. I think War of the Foxes was like 13 bucks on Barnes and Noble. Uh, if you got it on the nook, I like having physical copies, so I didn't. I opted out of that. I also don't have a nook. I have a tablet that has the Kindle on it, but I don't really use that. Um, I use the tablet mostly for for mobile gaming. But shh. Uh, but yeah, so. That was a kind of rambling, <laughs> rambling attempt at a review of poetry books by someone who is supposed to be an MFA graduate, uh, but we can all ignore that. The, um, the biggest thing to take away is, from this for me is that I read these and was full of inspiration and I'm going to use quite a bit of what he said as sort of the foundation for my next 
manuscript. So we will see how that goes. Uh, he definitely is my current uh, poetic muse. Um, the other one that's frequently my muse is uh, Sarah Kay. I adore her. So those are my top two recommendations for poets, Richard Sykin and Sarah Kay. Um, I will be looking at Sarah Kay's No Matter the Wreckage somewhere down the line. <laughs> I won't do so much poetry so quickly. Um, but yes, so that is Crush and War of the Foxes, once again, by Richard Sykin. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right, but that is what it is. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you at least take a peek, even if you look up his poetry online and, you know, read a couple. They're really good. They're really moving. Um, he's very talented. Um, and maybe take a look at Spork, his uh, literary journal, and see if anything there is interesting as well. Um, and I will try to get another review up soon-ish. <laughs> class for me does start in about a week and a half uh, for my Master's of Education. So we'll see what I can scrounge together. Um, but now that the holidays have passed, I'm sort of more in a focused mindset. And once I get into a school mindset, I will be here and I will be ready. So that has been your book review for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, share it, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all the nonsense stuff like that. And I will see you in the next review. Bye.